Hello everyone, welcome to Real Science Challenge. I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head, broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And here is a bell ringer or icebreaker that takes between five and 15 minutes while getting three tasks done. One, it gets people talking. Two, it gets people to formulate an argument. And three, it gets people to consider bias. So whether this is something you want to do on the first day after a long break or on the last day before a long break when kids are getting a little wily or any time in between, this icebreaker works great. And it's just one simple question. Is this a sandwich? Now before I get into the details, handouts for this activity can be found at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP42. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. First, some context. I recently spoke with the English department head at my school as to how she teaches bias because I'm trying to incorporate more humanities in my STEAM lessons. And since teaching bias is something in the science curriculum, I decided to speak to the English department head. And during our conversation, she told me about this icebreaker, which she, do, which she does with her students. And recently, I did with mine. And I've tried it with my Science 8, my Science 9, and my Science 10 students, and they all have a wonderful debate. The icebreaker goes like this. Imagine all foods are classified under three categories. Sandwiches, soups, or salads. Then, I present students with different food items and get them to classify them. For example, I've shown students a picture of a cheeseburger and asked them, is this a sandwich, a soup, or a salad? For their answer, I get students to also practice using CER to craft an argument. And most students would argue a cheeseburger is a sandwich because a cheeseburger has two pieces of bread with some meat and cheese and other fillers in between those two pieces of bread. And by definition, students would say, a sandwich is just two pieces of bread with filling between them. But then I present them with something else, like, for example, the following items found in our staff refrigerator, chips and salsa. And I ask them, is this a sandwich, soup, or salad? Now, some people may argue it's a salad because salsa is just a bunch of veggies mixed together and the chip can be seen as the crouton that goes into the salad. But it could also be considered perhaps a sandwich if we use the chip as the two pieces of bread and the salsa as the filling in between. It could also be considered a soup, depending on how watery this is. And therefore, this can be seen as the cracker that goes along with the soupy salsa. You can do this with other food items like pizza and lasagna. The possibilities are limitless. And how do we tie this all back to bias? Well, how you classify chips and salsa really depends on what you've been exposed to. And that's part of what forms our biases. We've always ever seen super wet, super pasty, and watery salsa. We might argue that chips and salsa is a soup. If we've always seen fresh diced veggies tossed together to make a salsa, then we'd probably say the salsa is a salad. And if we extrapolate this to science, there is bias in our experiments too. If we only ever sample a small population for our studies, then our results will be biased towards that population. In fact, all experiments have bias in them. It just depends on how much bias is present and what its influence is. You know, I get students to discuss bias in experimental design in a case study I give them afterwards. And you can find this case study in my handouts. That's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button or leave me a comment below. And handouts, once again, are at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP42. Thanks for watching. And let's talk science again soon.